Similar to work and energy, for rigid body planar kinetics, we can also apply the same principle of impulse and momentum as well as the conservation of momentum that we learned from the particle kinetics. We simply need to redefine the momentum for a rigid body. If you recall from particle kinetics, the linear momentum L defined for a particle is simply its mass m multiplied by its linear velocity v. And since velocity is a vector, therefore the linear momentum is also a vector. Also from particle kinetics, the angular momentum of a particle about a specified axis is calculated as simply the moment of its linear momentum about the said axis. For 2D planar motion, the angular momentum can be considered about a point instead of an axis and is calculated as linear momentum multiplied by the moment arm to the point. Now let's look at how the linear momentum and angular momentum are defined for a rigid body undergoing planar motion. For a rigid body undergoing planar motion, its gravitational center point G has linear velocity Vg and the rigid body has angular velocity omega. Its linear momentum is simply defined as the mass multiplied by the linear velocity Vg of its gravitational center. If we set the rigid body into the xy coordinate system, then the linear velocity Vg can be resolved into the x and y components. Therefore, the linear momentum vector L can also be resolved into the two scalars, the linear momentum along the x direction and the linear momentum along the y direction. The angular momentum, once again, is always calculated about a reference axis or a reference point for planar motion. Let's say if we want to calculate the angular momentum of this rigid body about an arbitrary point P. All we need to do is again treat the linear momenta as if they are forces and calculate their moments about point P, and then add Ig omega as if it is a free couple moment dx and dy, once again, are moment arms for the linear momenta. This approach should look very familiar to you. Remember, this is what we did when we need to find the kinetic moment about point P back when we were learning the equations of motion for rigid body planar motion. Since we can calculate the angular momentum of a rigid body about any arbitrary point, of special interest is the angular momentum about point G, the gravitational center. Since the linear momenta do not have moments about point G, the angular momentum about point G is always Ig times omega. Ig, once again, is the mass moment of inertia of this rigid body about an axis that is perpendicular to this plane and passes through its gravitational center point G. These two formulas for angular momentum are both general to any rigid body planar motion. With that in mind, let's look at some special cases. For translation, since the rigid body does not have angular velocity, hg, the angular momentum about point g, is always zero. However, its angular momentum about other points are not zero. Don't forget, its angular momentum about any other point is going to be the moment of its linear momentum. For rotation about a fixed axis, the angular momentum about point O, point O being the center of rotation, equals to IO omega. IO is the mass moment of inertia about the center of rotation. For general plane motion, if we can locate the instantaneous center of zero velocity, then the angular momentum calculated about point IC equals to IIC omega. Once again, IIC is the mass moment of inertia calculated about the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Now we have defined the linear momentum and angular momentum for a rigid body the same principle of linear impulse and momentum that we learned from particle kinetics still applies. That the initial linear momentum plus the linear impulse during the process from state one to state two equals to the final linear momentum. Linear impulse, just like before, is defined as the integration of all the external forces acting on the system integrated throughout this period of time.
Similarly, the principle of angular impulse and momentum also applies. For planar motion, this equation can be written in its scalar form, that the initial angular momentum of the system about point P plus the total angular impulse calculated about the same point P equals to the final angular momentum of the system calculated again about point P. Angular impulse, once again, is defined as the integration of all the external moments about point P integrated throughout this period of time. Therefore, the principle of impulse and momentum for a rigid body planar motion can be written into three scalar equations. The principles of linear impulse and momentum along the x-direction and along the y-direction, and the principle of angular impulse and momentum about an arbitrary point P. Don't forget, this set of equations apply not only to a single rigid body, but also a system of bodies. Once again, just like what we've learned in particle kinetics, if there is no or negligible net external linear impulse, then linear momentum is conserved for the system. If there is no or negligible net external angular impulse about a certain point P, then angular momentum is conserved about that point P. Again, conservations of momentum can be applied to a single rigid body or a system of bodies. Let's look at this example. We have seen this pendulum before. It is pinned at point O, and this time it is subjected to a couple moments, which is a function of time, 10 times t to the second power. It is also subjected to a constant force, 40 newton, which is always normal to the rod. This means that the moment arm of this force about point O is always a constant. And we need to determine the angular velocity of this pendulum when the time t equals to 4 seconds. This motion is in horizontal plane, which means that the weight of the pendulum does not contribute to the motion. So we start with drawing the free body diagram of this pendulum showing all the external forces and moment within this plane. And that's why the weight force is not showing. Also, we calculated the position of point G as well as the radius of gyration about point G in one of the previous videos. In this example, since time is a concern, it is a typical problem to be solved by applying the principle of impulse and momentum. And since we need to calculate angular velocity, we need to apply the principle of angular impulse and momentum. But the question is, which point do we choose to be our reference point? Don't forget, angular impulse and momentum are calculated about a reference point. Now, look at point O. We have two unknown forces, OX and OY. Therefore, it makes sense to choose point O as our reference point and write our equation, because this way we do not have to deal with the forces OX and OY, since they both have line of actions passing point O, therefore they do not have any moment about point O, therefore they do not have any impulse about point O. And don't forget, the pendulum is released from rest, therefore this term is zero. For the angular impulse about point O, since, once again, OX and OY do not have impulse about point O, this only has the contributions from the couple moment, which is a function of time, as well as the moment of the constant force about point O. And we can evaluate that. And for the system, its final angular momentum about point O is calculated as IO omega 2. IO is the mass moment of inertia about point O since point O is the center of rotation, and omega 2 is the angular velocity of the final stage that we need to calculate. And IO can be determined through the parallel axis theorem again. Therefore, from here, we can solve for omega 2 to be 9.98 .9 radian per second. And this completes this problem. Let's look at this example. We have a uniform slender rod that is hanging from a rope, and a bullet shoots into this rod and becomes embedded in it. And we need to determine the angular velocity of this rod immediately after the bullet becomes embedded.
and we also need to determine the position of point P about which the rod appears to rotate. For this problem, since it's practically impossible to determine the impulse exerted by the bullet to the rod, we are going to treat the bullet and the rod as one system so that we can avoid the internal impulse between the bullet and the rod. So we start with the free body diagram of this system, which is subjected to the weight force of the rod, the weight force of the bullet, as well as the tension force from the rope. For the kinetic diagrams, initially the rod is at rest, the bullet has an initial velocity which is 600 meter per second. Then after the bullet is embedded into the rod, the gravitational center of the rod has linear velocity of Vg2, the bullet has linear velocity of Vb2, and also, since the rod starts to rotate, it also has the angular velocity omega 2. From the free body diagram, you can see that if we set up our xy coordinate system as we usually do, there is no external force to this system along the x direction. Therefore, there is no linear impulse along the x direction. So along the x direction, the linear momentum is conserved for this system. And we can write the equation out, substitute in all the known parameters, and this is our first equation. Again, from the free body diagram, we can see that all the external forces are collinear. They all pass through point G. Therefore, they do not have any angular impulse about point G. Therefore, for the system, its angular momentum about point G is conserved. For the initial state, the rod is at rest. It does not have any angular momentum. For the bullet, its angular momentum is calculated as the moment of its linear momentum about point G. dB here is the moment arm, which is 0.3 meter. For the final state, the angular momentum of the system about point G includes the moment of the linear momentum of the bullet as well as Ig omega 2. Ig is the mass moment of inertia of this rod. As you can see, since the bullet has a very small mass when compared to the rod, we are neglecting its contribution to the mass moment of inertia of the system. Again, we substitute in all the known parameters, and this is our equation 2. Then let's assume the position of point P is at a distance of H from point G. Point P appears to be the center of rotation. In other words, it is the instantaneous center of zero velocity of this rigid body. Therefore, from kinematics, we know that the linear velocities follow this relation, that Vg2 equals to omega 2 times H, and Vb2 equals to omega 2 times H plus 0.3 meter. And these are our equations 3 and 4. Therefore, we have four equations, four unknowns, Vg2, Vb2, omega2, and H. And we can solve for all of them. And this completes this problem.